In this video, I'm going to describe the installation of the reversible top. And specifically, the linkage that carries the top. I'll need two long links, which essentially carry the top while it's being flipped from one side to the other. Two anchors, anchor posts, that screw to the back edge of the cabinet, and two short links, which have a pivot point on the anchor and a pivot point right in the center of the top. The top needs to have holes drilled for lag screws. I'll attach the uh, links to the top with lag screws. One right in the center and one three quarters of an inch from the front edge or 20 millimeters. And then we need a hole into the cabinet side, right into the shelf. Go into the side, right into the shelf, exactly centered from front to back. And we'll install a light screw into the lower end of the link at, at, at that point as well. To prepare the links, I'll, each, each one of them requires a hole for either a bolt or a lag screw, and I'll uh, deal with one end first. Uh, I didn't have a suitable fender washer, so I just made one with a hole saw, and uh, I can mark the end of the link for rounding it over, the hole for the lag screw or pivot bolt. So I'll do that uh, to each leg, round over the ends, drill a hole uh, in one end of each leg and drill the holes into the uh, top and the sidewall. Then we'll go ahead and establish the, the length of the links, drill the second hole and round over the other end of each one. Now for drilling the holes in the top, I ins installed a fence on my drill press table and set it exactly half of the width of the table just to guide it while I'm drilling the holes. I drilled some very small holes right on the crosshairs um, to guide the bit. This is very slightly smaller diameter than my lag screws. The lag screws don't need much holding power to hold them in. Uh, and it, I don't want to have the, the pilot holes so small that the lag screws split the plywood as they're driven in. I'm drilling the hole in each end of the links. So I've changed the drill bit up one size, so it'll now be exactly the size of the bolts and the light screws. To round off the corners, or to round off the ends of the links, I'm going to use a bandsaw first to just take off the corners.
and uh, then I'm going to switch to my disc sander to round off the ends up to the line. <laughs> I've established the length of the long link, have drilled it, rounded it over the second end, and installed a lag screw at the bottom end and a lag screw at the top temporarily. Now, we need to establish the length of the short link and the height of the anchor. As this flips over, The anchor strip has to clear the top of the long link. So I'm going to clamp in place this anchor strip flush with the top side of the short link. Now, I've got a small diameter pencil that I'm going to put through the top end of the anchor and just scribe a line on the uh, inside of the short link. Then I'll drill this short link on the intersection of the center line and my scribed line to establish the length and round it over. And then I can also, while I'm here, drill screw holes from the anchor into the back edge of the cabinet. because I'm using fairly long screws. And incidentally, I've started off center and I'm drilling these at an angle again so the screws capture several layers of plywood in the sides of the cabinet for extra, extra screw holding strength. I've completed the stand by attaching the anchors to the back edge of the cabinet with three long flathead screws. Uh, I've attached the top with lag screws at the top end of these carrier links, the long links, and with lag screws at this end of the short links. And this is how it works. ready for any of many types of bench top tools. I think it's a pretty good design because the top doesn't need any latch or locking mechanism to hold it in one position or the other. The weight of the tools simply hold the top down very securely with a pretty solid stand. And then to flip it over, it's just a matter of flipping from the top from one side to the other. So the long links act as carriers to carry the top from front to back or in reverse, and the short links act as anchors to hold the, to position the top fore and aft on the stand. There's one more aspect to the stand that I'd like to discuss before we wrap up this section of the video, and that is that on my prototype stand, you might remember if you look at the first video, that these links are flush with the top. Gives them a little bit better appearance, maybe a little bit more usefulness, depending on what kind of tool or work surface you want to have on the top of the stand. Um, 
I'm going to give you the choice of building it this way with the links raised up because they need to be above the longer links. They need to clear the longer links when the stand is tilted with the link to the rear. But for better appearance, I'm going to re redo the stand so that these anchor links and the anchors are down flush with the top. And to do that, I'm going to use some steel strips on the in, at the top end of the long links. I'm going to cut off the, the long links and attach these steel strips to the back side of them so that in the rear position the steel strips can pass inside of the long, of the uh, short links. I'll have a, a small notch cut on the inside of the short links to clear the steel strip and the lag screw. I'm giving you the option because it might be difficult to find some suitable steel. This is 7 gauge uh, according to the charts that I have and it's uh, 87 thousandths of an inch 2.2 millimeters thick. Okay, we're back at the router table and I'm going to <coughs> remove some material from the link to inset the steel piece at the top end. So I'm going to set the router bit height as close as I can to the thickness of the steel extension. I've rounded over the tip to match the wood tip that we had on here before. And I'm going to remove material from the inside of the link up to this mark. And I'm just going to chase it. in the steel extension to the long links uh, for some flathead screws. so that it's now flush uh, with the top. And it does look a little better, doesn't it? I've cut off the top of the links and added the uh, steel extension so it can slide in behind this upper link when the long link is in its rearward position. And I did cut it off on an angle so that it would make a little neater intersection where it comes up here and tucks in behind the upper link. Okay, so this did require removing some material from the inside of the upper link to make room I routed a notch. I routed a notch on the inside of each upper leg to make room for the head of the lag screw to slide in on the inside of it.
That wraps up the installation of the top and its attaching linkage portion of this video.